All right, and so we're in the main discussion topic of this week's episode, and so it's a two-fold one. The very first thing that we'll be talking about is this short film, Two Dis Strangers, starring Joey Badass, weirdly enough, um, who did a, a pretty okay job. Not great, um, but he's, again, for somebody who's not an actor, really good job in the story uh, that, I, that I loved. And so the thing that I want to talk about from in this show is that it's such a great short film and such a great one that is meant to bring notice to something that we've been dealing with for now years in a row. Um, and, and, you know, for anyone who's not familiar with the show, so the ba basic outline of this show is that Joey Badass is somebody, it's kind of like a Groundhog's Day-like story um, for anyone who's familiar with that or Happy Death Day uh, for my horror fans. Um, but uh, set in New York, and this guy is waking up after a night of meeting a girl that he really likes, sleeping with her, and he just keeps getting murdered by the same cop. The very first one is a, uh, it's it's basically um, how George Floyd died of, of saying, I can't breathe. I'm sorry, Eric Garner is the one, um, is the very first one, and that's the I can't breathe, apologize. Um, and and that alone was powerful. Like seeing the whole way that that first cycle or loop, I guess is what we'll call it, uh, plays out is just powerful. And it's and it's one that leaves you like, man, what the fuck? And then when he wakes back up the same uh, that in the same place that he started from, it's it. It's 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 just powerful because you're left hanging on the fact that damn, not only could this happen, this is something basically that happened. And of course, you know, it, Liberty's made for the story. Um, but then he, he, he dies like George Floyd later on. Um, there's a time where he decides to stay in the apartment and uh, then they bust swap bust in and they think it's a different apartment. He gets shot that way. Um, and overall, this loop that, that keeps happening is just different interactions with him and this cop killing him. and that alone would be powerful because it's it's bringing like i said light to something that we have seen in the news for years and years to years it's summer after summer after summer after summer and not even just summer sometimes that we get where it's like open season on black men all in the news we're dealing with something now um so that alone like i said would be a very powerful story but the thing that makes it different is that it starts off so the so one of the times, and this is where like it takes it it takes it to a new level. He decides to just stop and talk to this cop, and he explains the story, and he says, "I know this is going to happen. I know this is going to happen." And the cop kind of just like, "Well, you you better get out of here then." Like, um, and so he walks away, and he goes down this alley, and he sees uh these two kids run off, and the other cops come, and he kind of just knows I'm finna get shot. Watch, and it happens. And then so he wakes up the next day, he explains to the cop again, and I think there was a couple more loops after that. But uh, eventually what we get is him having this conversation with this cop that he has where he shows that he knows what's going to happen. And him and this cop, he says, you know, well, why don't you just take me home? And um, he gets in the backseat with the cop. They're on this, ro this ride and they, they connect, whether it's over how black people see cops, why the guy, the guy became a cop. Uh, and he gives a, he gives a really surface level answer. Like, well, I see a country that was losing its way. He's like, no, why really did you become a cop? And the guy says, I was tired of getting bullied. And Joey Badass's character says, so you became a bully. He says, no, I put the bullies away. And so like you, you start feeling like these guys are connecting on a different level. Um, Joey Badass's character is learning something. Uh, the cop played by Andrew Howard. Um, one of those, and Andrew Howard is one of those actors who you've seen and stuff. But I've never known his name. Like, I, I can't remember how many movies I've seen this guy in. He's the stereotypical, like, bad guy or Eastern European uh, looking guy. Like, but, um, and they, they have this thing where, where they connect. And overall, Joey Badass's character is just trying to get home to his dog, which is something I can relate to with these two behemoth of beasts that I have here as pets. Um, and so you think, oh, well, this, this is going to close the loop. Like, they talk, they shook hands. Joey Badass is walking home, and then Andrew Howard, the cop character, starts clapping, and he's like, of all the ones, you did this, and it's revealed that 
the cop is in this loop too. He is aware of every time he's killed this guy. And he pulls out his gun and he shoots him. And he's like, see you, see you tomorrow, see you in the morning or whatever it is. And it's just like mind boggling. And so the way that I took this, and again, I know sometimes I tend to look at things a little bit deeper than probably what they need to be looked at, um, is that the cop is making the choice, right? To kill this guy. And th on a deeper level with the themes is that while as this is affecting Joey Badass's whole life to the cop, this is business as usual. This is intentional. This is just another day at, 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 at work. And that in of itself is powerful. And so I'm going to play a clip from uh, Kumo later on um, that, you know, he went on, he went on this rant. And so it highlights the thing that, and let me, let, let, and I don't want to paint. And I want to be very careful here because I have family members that are cops. I have friends that are cops. Uh, people I used to work with, shout out to dad's talking shit podcast. Whenever they come back that they're cops um, and they're black, black men. So I don't want to paint every cop with this broad brush. Like I think we, we tend to do that. And I understand it's the system more than sometimes specific cops, but that's, that's another story for another day. Um, but the thing that I want to focus on here is that, um, like I said, this is business as usual for a lot of them. And they get to go back on, live their lives. Whereas this inherent fear that we have, um, that we're not being seen, that it's not being taken seriously for the people who think that or want to call out. And the thing that pisses me off that we get a lot is how many black people are, were killed by other blacks. Like, fuck all that shit. When the people, no matter how many black people in hoods kill each other over whatever else, whether it's gangs, drugs, whatever else, that does not compare to an organization who is here with the idea of protecting and serving us being as fearful as them as we are for the gangs. And so that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand in this. And I think this short film really tries to drill that message home so much. And I understand this is dramatization. It's not necessarily how all of these situations went. I get that. But the theme of this film, the trigger warning of this film, is all very something that's very much valid and something that it needs more light needs to be brought brought up to. Um, and just like I said, this is just a beautiful film. Um, one of the last, uh, I think it was the last time we saw him die. His blood formed in like the outline of, of the country of Africa. And it just, it, it's, it's a powerful, powerful film. And as someone who creates short films, I, fuck, I wish I can pack a short film full of this much meaning. Um, just uh, overall, great film. Not that big of a cast. Um, it's a it's a short watch. It's it's like an exactly thirty minute long film. So it's one of those films that you can watch, get in and out of, watch a couple of times if you want to. If you think you missed something, and I just I wanted to take some time to highlight on it. But something that I want to talk about that it's funny that I watched this film the same day that I saw this clip. I'm gonna play this clip for you first, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. So we're gonna go ahead and play it now. You're here, people. What are you gonna do when you see these shootings? You know what you're gonna do. At George Floyd. Did you hear about him? At Dante Wright. Did you hear about him? That 13-year-old Adam, you know he was a gangbanger. Why do that? Because you want to make the problem them. Takes the onus off the idea that you're wrong about policing not needing to change. Forget that police are trained to deal with non-compliance with force that is not lethal. Hey, comply or die. You know what I mean? And you know what the answer is? You really do. You don't like it. I don't like it. It scares me. Shootings, gun laws, access to weapons. Oh, you, I know when they'll change. Your kids start getting killed. White people's kids start getting killed. Smoking that doobie that's actually legal probably in your state now, but they don't know what it was. And then the kid runs and it pop, 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 pop. Cop was justified. Why'd you run? Oh, he had a baseball game tonight. Huh? The white kid. Oh, big family. That house over there. Those start piling up. 
What is going on with these police? Oh, what? Maybe we shouldn't even have police. That kind of mania, that kind of madness, that'll be you. That'll be the majority because it's your people. See, now black people start getting all guns, forming militias, protect themselves. Can't trust deep state. Woo-hoo. You'll see a wave of change in access and accountability. We saw it in the 60s. That's when it changes, because that's when it's you. So my job is to show you in them. All right. And so that was a powerful statement by Chris, Chris Kumo. Um, like I'm saying, I always feel like I'm saying that last name wrong. And that is that white people will never really understand until it's their child, right? And even then, even then, I don't think they'll really understand unless it's a black cop who 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 is unfortunately on the other side of that if it if it's their child being harmed or losing their life in an interaction with the cop. That's just my personal opinion. I know not everyone may agree with that and that's fine. Um but I think there's so there's there's two sides to this conversation, right? The one side of it is We've been saying this for years, right? Black people, prominent black people, us in the community, on social media, activists have been saying the same thing. Does it take for a white person to say it for it to be taken seriously? And even then, I really think this is going to be one of those things that's taken, heard, it gets pop, like retweeted in social media, mainly by black people, and that it really doesn't cause any change. But will that change not happen until it's a white child who is who's unfortunately minding their own business and something gets mistaken for a weapon or or some interaction goes left and they accidentally lose their lives? Is that when police reform will come? And again, police reform, I think, is the is the pos- is the key word here, because things need to change. If you look at what is ha- has happened in this country over the last handful of years, hell, since the existence. And if you don't think something needs to be changed, then you're willfully ignorant. And that doesn't mean that you have to think that, and I get it, some people think white privilege isn't real, some people think that white oppression isn't real, some people even think that racism isn't still a thing. But at the end of the day, if you look at the statistics, even if you feel like racism didn't play a part if you look at the statistics at how many unarmed people, even like I said, if you want to take black people out of the way, but I'm specifically talking about black people, have lost their lives. And if you don't think that something needs to be changed, whether it's the training, whether it's the, the, the uh, them, if, it, if it's stronger protocols in which they, they are allowed to use their weapon, whether it's being prosecuted, for the deaths and and this happens at a higher rate than what it is, if you don't think something needs to be changed at some level, you're willfully ignorant, you're not only part of the problem, but you're a fucking idiot. And that's my personal opinion on this. I don't give a fuck. And I know, I say a lot about, this is an open conversation, I wanna hear you guys. I don't give a flying fuck how you feel if you don't think that something needs to change with the police system in this country. If you don't think that needs, something needs to be done, something can't be done to be changed to stop people from unnecessarily losing their lives, you are a fucking idiot, and I don't want to hear your opinion on this subject. I don't give a fuck how you feel about it. I really don't. I don't care. I am a black man who has to raise black men in this country. My son, Xavier, is... 15th birthday was just this past past weekend just drove to go spend time with him and celebrate that but i i know that i have to teach my son at 15 years old because he's 180 pounds and six feet tall that he has to be aware that to somebody he he's threatening like you don't, you would never understand that pain until you have to have that conversation with one of your children. That's a conversation, and that's a level of innocence that you have to rip away from your child that you can never 
fucking get back. And to think that things don't need to change while parents have to have conversations like this, you're an idiot. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. Um, and, you know, as far as like Cuomo saying it and it coming from a white man, um, and if that makes it more digestible, I don't, I, I, the people who choose not to look, I don't, I don't give a, I don't think they give a fuck who says it. Um, that's, again, that's my opinion. I may be completely biased and, and turned on that, but that's just what it is. That's my opinion on it. And that's coming off the, um, again, powerful film in uh, Two Distant Strangers. Great use of music, beautiful visuals. Like some of the drone shots in that, in that film were fucking amazing. Um, and I know I just went really hard left and then came back to the right side of things as far as like in my tone and what I'm talking about as far as like getting back focused on the film. Great film. Check it out. I'd love to hear how you guys feel about it. But getting to the last conversation in this episode of the Awaken Soul Podcast. So this is titled The Last Call. I've been teasing it. I said I'd be recording the last episode of the Awaken Soul Podcast. <sighs> <laughs> um, and by that, this is what I mean. All things come to end, they have to evolve. Um, sometimes things have to die. But with that being said, um, death is a rebirth in a lot of different ways. And when I say that this is the last call, it's the last call for the awakened soul in a way that it's been done. Not necessarily different from kind of how this episode has gone. Um, but I feel like, and I have to hold myself accountable, right? And the last time I did this was an episode called Get the Fluff Out, where I called myself out for kind of taking it easy, getting away from some of the deeper con uh, concepts that I have been talking about for a while and taking it easy for a while, doing more easily digestible content. And I had to call myself out while not nearly at that level. I don't think anyone could look at the awakened soul and say that I've pulled any punches in the last couple of years. Um, but by that, I mean, because if you can't tell, I love talking about film. I love talking about music. And just to kind of walk through the journey and the process in this, um, when I started the awakened soul, right, we, I had, I talked about film. I talked about music. We had a whole segment called the cipher, um, in which we talked about music. Now that kind of got cannibalized. And because the breaks radio came about, I wanted to focus on the breaks radio. I wanted to leave a lot of the music conversations for there, since that is based on hip hop music. And I took a lot of those conversations away, even though they were different, the way that we review music, we talk about music news. We talk about like some of the higher concepts in music, like, um, song structure and things like that. But I got away from how music reflects what's going on in, in, in the culture. And the Awakened Soul, when initially would have started because it was my only podcast, it was literally everything that I've now separated out to different podcasts. So I have the Film Frequency, which focuses on film. I have uh, the Breaks Radio, which I'm in. Let me not say I have. I'm a co-host on the Film Frequency. I'm a co-host on the Breaks Radio. Um, and those things have kind of separated out. We're, we're, and let me, let me kind of frame this a little bit more. My next tattoo is that of a phoenix. And I really feel like the phoenix is my spirit animal, meaning that I had an episode two, I think, called Rebirth. Um, after I went through my divorce, I went through a rebirth of myself. And that's how I discovered podcasting. That's how I discovered and, and focused on my passions. I wouldn't have found film if it wasn't for that. And so I, the awakened soul needs to grow and change. We've been around for almost four years at this point. This August will be four years. We're not too far from that. And because things need to die and sometimes things need to be re reborn. When I say it's the last call, I don't mean the awakened soul is going away forever. I mean, this format of the awakened soul is going to go away. And I know I've been a little less consistent over the last uh, couple of months. There's been more weeks where I haven't done an episode than at any year ever uh, that I've been podcasting. and. I think for me, it's because I've kind of capped the things that I talk about on The Awakened Soul because I don't want to cannibalize my other podcast because we have great people who work on that podcast. And the thing that I've really been thinking about and battling um, is 
how do I reintroduce those things while not taking away from other things? And I think, for example, like with music, I just said how I'm going to bring that back. So to bear the lead here, the way the reason this is called the last call is because this is the last call of me. Ma the, the awakened soul not being what it was originally set out to be. And by that, this is what I mean. You're going to start getting more bonus episodes again. Um, the Awakened Soul is going to become more of a hub for all things our culture. You're still going to get your episode every week, but you're going to start getting more than an episode every week. We are transitioning the 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 podcast from, well, the Awakened Soul from a podcast to really being a platform. And by that, I mean, we're going to bring back film reviews like I just did with Two Distant Strangers. That could have been a special episode. I was so compelled. I wanted to make sure I talked about it here. But we are going to be introducing more content in a way that is reflective of what the base of The Awakened Soul is. You're going to be hearing from more people. I know for a long time, I think I, I, st I stopped using as many guests as I was because I wanted to focus. I, wanted, I, I needed to pull that out of myself. I didn't want to rely on guests. I wanted to have guests as I wanted to connect with certain creatives. And the conversation I felt brought things out in certain creatives. And I think one of the best examples of that is me working with Courtney on the Malcolm and Marie podcast. You're going to be getting more stuff like that. So whereas the base, the weekly full episodes of the Awakened Soul are going to be still what I've been doing, um, a little bit different, but this podcast, your subscription to this is going to mean more because you're going to start getting more. You're going to start hearing more voices on things like TV and film. Those things specifically, I'm going to be more open to bringing more guests in because it's more of an open conversation. The higher concept things that we do, the list, the self-help type things, that's still, like I said, as I need a guest or as a guest add, can add to that conversation, you'll be having them there too. But we're going to eventually get the thing that we're going to start off with two episodes a week. You're going to get, we're going to get back to our Sunday releases, Sunday night releases of The Awakened Soul, the full episode. We're going to have midweek releases Wednesday, whether that's talking about something like Captain I'm sorry, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier um, and the themes of race, whether that's talking about them, whether it's talking about how this album meant something to me. You're going to get more of me. You're going to get more guests. You're going to get more insightful. Your subscription to The Awakened Soul is going to mean more. So when I say last call, I mean, we're doing last call on this being a traditional podcasting platform and release schedule. We're getting more to being reflective of all things in this culture. I always say this is the number one podcast for the culture. And that is going to be a statement that I make me mean more in the way that I deliver it. So everything has to come to an end. But e that end isn't actually always the death. Well, yeah, it isn't actually always the end. Sometimes things have to end to start back. And one of the first episodes that I'm going to be bringing you guys um, as a midweek catch up is I'm going to be going over one of my favorite, favorite shows ended in shameless. I'm going to be talking about some of the best finales in TV history and a lot of the shows of the culture, how they ended, how endings of shows either can make the show be better or good in the ending. We'll talk about it, but be looking out for more content for me. I have this whole studio that I built and it's time to use it, put it more. And we're going to do more live streams. Some of these off week topics are going to be live streams so when i say last call it's just last call for how things have been done we're going into a new generation of the awakened soul a new phase of the awakened soul and um that we were in phase two of the awakened soul i guess we're now going into phase three so be on the lookout for that um if this is your first time listening this may be confusing go back and listen to past episodes but you're going to be getting more content from me outside of the other podcasts that i do um, so that's it. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I know I have people scared with the whole last call thing. Like people took that shit way left. Uh, but it's going to be great. Uh, this has been another episode of the Awakened Soul. If you want to follow the podcast, you can do so at Awakened Soul Pod. If you want to follow me, you can do so at CEO Hayes. That's CEO H-A-I-Z-E. You can also send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, the Awakened Soul Pod at gmail.com. You can also send us a voicemail, 614-547. 2039. We are the number one podcast for the culture. Like I said, that phrase is going to be meaning a little bit more here shortly. Uh, and that's it. This week we out. I love each and every one of you guys. I say that every episode. That's the way I end it because I truly do. I love all my supporters, all the listeners of The Awakened Soul. We got some big shit planned. Um, and you'll be on the lookout. Be, well, 
You'll see it, but be on the lookout for it. But I'm signing off. Peace. Peace. Bye. Sarinara. All that good stuff. I'll see you lovely and beautiful people next week. I'm out. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.